everyone, this is Jim Egan, head of school, sit up school with a Friday update. We are heading into the July 4th weekend. Have a great holiday, be safe out there. Uh, I'm on campus uh, in our garden space. We are anything but a country school. Uh, however, we've created a real sanctuary of nature. There are bees and bugs all around. Sometimes the squirrels get in here. Uh, we have tomatoes, we have strawberries growing right in front of me, and we'll be using this class in the fall. This is a classroom um, to really dig into the science behind uh, a garden and use it uh, as a learning laboratory and also a place that's just sort of nice to spend some time. Uh, certainly, I like this place. Uh, it's, it's, it's a quiet oasis in a very uh, otherwise urban environment. We have a lot going on on campus. Uh, the summer is anything but slow. We just finished up intercession where we had dozens of kids from Synapse uh, being taught and uh, working with alum who led classes throughout the morning. Thanks to all the alum who came back uh, to help. Thank you, Lexi and Ali, staff members extraordinaire, who put that program together. So we had kids here up to yesterday, and even a few of them were really sad to go, but we need to have a little bit of a break. We've got camps going on, Project Ember, Aim High, and three of our four buildings uh, are being reconstructed and deconstructed right now. We're making more improvements for the school year next year. We're putting in science labs in building one. Music is going upstairs in building two. The art space has been expanded broadly. There's a lot happening. Um, so I wanted to give you an update around next fall. I've met with other heads. I've talked to the county, uh, the superintendent of schools, and we're waiting for the CDC to give us uh, updated guidance. They are slow to do that at this point, but that's okay, it is summer. I can tell you a few things. We will expect a few of these uh, protocols to still remain in place. So this is what the county told us. We will still have positive tests, right? That's what we know. Uh, we will still have kids and staff likely quarantining. That's likely to happen next year. Um, we still need to do distance learning in some capacity, and we will do that. It won't be an option, you can't choose it, but we will have it uh, in case we need um, to use it for certain kids or for certain staff or certain classes. Um, it won't be part of the menu, so to speak, but it will be there, distance learning will be there. We're looking to be 100% on campus, that's for sure. Uh, distancing measures will be in place if we can use them. The county said they don't uh, they aren't necessary. Uh, we can expect school uh, uh, and our kids to have masks. That is something that will likely be a requirement uh, by the county, so expect masks. And the, sort of the key items for us to think about over the next four weeks as we prepare, prepare for, for an August start, it's really only four weeks away for a lot of us, um, is that we'll have to think about what we want to do regarding testing, um, how we want to deploy masks. It's likely that we will have masking optional outside, but inside there will be masks. Uh, how do we screen our families and, and our kids and our teachers without it being so laborious, right? That process from last year we won't, we won't use, but we'll need some sort of screening. Of course, ventilation is a big deal. I think we've knocked it out of the park here and we continue to adapt. And um, hand hygiene. Like, so the, those are the big issues, right? Testing, masking, ventilation, hand hygiene, and screening. So we're deep into the planning around COVID for next year. And that's uh, something that we can, uh, those, those issues I just brought up, those, um, those uh, sort of guiding uh, principles or key items are uh, something for you to think about as we move forward. Now, I did wanna take some time in this video to talk about our school's guiding principles. Um, I think a number of you probably don't know the origin of these. Uh, it may be staff, you may be parents, but in 2014, we, um, the board and I, embarked on a strategic framework, a process to create a framework. In that, we codified our mission, we focused on our vision, but we also looked at our guiding principles. And so, in that document from 2014, um, it reads, our guiding principles. Deliver excellence in all educational programs and model best practices for the benefit of education globally. Two, anchor our approach to instruction and the learning environment in current scientific research. And three, maintain a culture of integrity, wellness, and curiosity about the world in which we live. 
so if you think about where we are now in 2021, um, we are absolutely modeling best practices globally. Uh, this past year, we were uh, looked at certainly locally, absolutely nationally as a beacon of innovation around opening a school in a pandemic, right? We're working with Stanford. Our reach actually went beyond our borders. Uh, certainly the, the doctors we were working with um, on our program, our educational program, uh, were also helping schools in Taiwan and Japan and Hong Kong. So um, we were really living that principle. If you think about the scientific research or anchoring our approach to scientific research, really think about the BLC. I talked about the BLC in my previous uh, video. Uh, we are absolutely dedicated to what the science says. That means we're not dogmatic. It also means we question everything, right? We question the way things were done, the way things that we do, uh, uh, do them now, right? There, everything gets questioned and we're constantly thinking about the science. I had a meeting last week with um, folks from Stanford, Liz from the BLC as well, and we are really trying to make sure that we embed the scientific process and the approach and the research into uh, all that we do and in all of our learning environments. And that culture of integrity and wellness. Integrity, all about our values. We really live our values. Wellness, this is done through the obvious lens of SEL. Uh, certainly our EID work has a lot to do with it. Uh, we look at kids through strengths, not weaknesses, right? We talk about this from time to time. Sometimes parents uh, don't really understand that. They're like, what, what is not going well for my kid? They want to know that. Uh, and we're just gonna say, well, we'll tell you that, but first we're gonna tell you the strengths. And um, that we pride ourselves on being a school that is a little bit of a safe haven from the rampant competition in elementary schools and middle schools that is both local and national, right? That we are gonna minimize the homework load. We are gonna minimize tests and quizzes. Doesn't mean we get rid of homework. Doesn't mean we don't have those assessments. We do, um, but we are going to uh, ratchet down the stress so kids love school. And if parents really understand our priorities and our principles, right, about SEL and well-being and outstanding academics that fulfill individual promise and really believe that, you know, innovation joined with actualization can um, lead to wonderful things in high school. When you have that partnership and everyone's on the same page, you really do um, have a chance at creating something special for a student come ninth grade. And so I happen to have, um, uh, a letter that was sent to me from one of our ninth graders, uh, uh, someone who spent just finished her ninth grade, uh, Synapse student. I'm gonna uh, take the name out and take the school out, right? But um, this letter, I think, is um, a great example of um, what can happen when parents and school are on the same page and the child embraces the Synapse environment. So let me read it. So, and I'm, again, I'm gonna take the names now. Uh, she had a phenomenal first year at school. She earned excellent grades, adjusted to the expectations of school life, and trained hard in sports. However, her effort scores and letter grades do not do justice to how and why she earned them. I remember her concern at the beginning of the year with a letter grading system since grades were not quantitative at her previous school. I believe she discovered she has an internal grading system. Her expectations, desire to learn, and self-reliance pushed her past our quantitative means of grading. During my experience as a teacher, I rarely come across a student that enjoys the process of learning. Everything she did represented a student that loves school. She engaged with every assignment and connected it to the concepts covered in class. She thought about why a task was important and how it would provide academic growth. She consistently studied to understand subjects, not to memorize them, nor to reflect the teacher's expectations. She focused on the details and then connected ideas on a more global scale. Her strength of character, self-discipline, and emotional maturity was vital to her success. Her teachers mentioned that she was an active listener during discussions, choosing to speak when she had a unique viewpoint or additional information to contribute. Her input was always thoughtful and conscientious. Her contributions in class increased during the year, showing both growing self-confidence and trust in her voice. I noticed a similar willingness in the spring 
to state her opinions during the weekly advisory meetings. By the end of the year, our advisory discussions covered many topics outside of the school sphere. It felt as if I was part of a teenage think tank, exclamation point. It goes on uh, to talk about this student's journey this year. In fact, a, 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 a journey during quite a, a turbulent year. Um, this is just one example, right? It's an anecdote, I understand that. But it's an example of what might happen when a student embraces our learning process, our space, the relationships with teachers, and those parents do too. That's our purpose. That's how it works, when it works. Uh, I love to hear your feedback. I'd be happy to respond um, if you have any comments. And again, happy July 4th. Have a wonderful weekend. And I look forward to seeing you soon.